the process description, conditions, unit operation, and products of FCC is shown next. Now I want to give you an overview first. We will start feeding our raw material here to the FCC, to the cracker. Technically speaking, it's a reactor. And it has a catalyst in fluid state or fluidized catalyst. And then there is reaction and vaporization occurs as well. So the products go as vapor or reactor vapors. And one important thing is that the catalyst is spent. So we got to recover that. So all this unit is the catalyst recovery. So we have number one, number two. Now the reactor vapors must be treated, must be stabilized, must be fractionated. And this will be the third part. Let's say the main fractionation unit and we will get all the final products. So we have three main units As stated the reactor, the regenerator and the stabilization of the product. Here they go. The reactor is here. Where is it? Yeah, this is the reactor. This is the regenerator and this is the stabilizer. Now, we can also state this as the follow, uh, the reaction part, the regeneration part, and the fractionation part. Typical operation conditions of the FCC or the reactor will be the follow. For these conditions, we will have the following temperatures. 291 Celsius furnace outlet temperature. The reactor feed will be 371 and the vapors or products of the reactor will be up to 549. Good. Now let's continue. We have FCC reactor, which is this one right here. The feed enters. So we got our feed, which will be typically the vacuum gas oil or the vacuum residue goes here. A mixture of that will go here. The recycle of several products such as the slurry, which is here, and the heavy gas oils are recycled. Now we get this to the riser and starts going through this part right here. There will be reaction and there will be cracked products, mainly gases, unstabilized nafta, light and heavy gas oils, and the leftover, which is the slurry. It is therefore subject to stability, so we want to recover our product and make it stable, so it is sent to this destination. Here, we separate most of the products as gases, middle cut, heavy cut, and the slurry. The slurry could be stated as the leftover of the stabilized product. So we separate decant oil and we recover more gas oils. Nafta stabilization, so it sounds kind of fancy, but it's nothing more than a distillation column and a series of processes which will separate as follows. Where is the way? Okay. Yeah. So overhead gas from the main column. So remember, this is the main column. These are the overhead gases. So these are sent to this part right here. Of course, this is just a, it's a symbolic. This will be the actual thing. So you got gases, they will be compressed. They will be cooled down. They will be mixed with the overhead of this stripper. They will be recycled with most of this nafta, cooled down and allow it to separate them. Okay, so most of these will go as heavy material, which is the naphtas. Most of the gases go here, so they are cleaned up. Remember, this is an absorber. So all the gases are cleaned up now, mostly uh, hydrogen, uh, methane, ethanes, and so on. Nafta, which is unstabilized nafta, is now stabilized a little bit. It is further stabilized in the stripper section. So let's check it out it's right here. Well, before going to the stripper section, remember we have nafta, but we also have the off gases. Now the off gases of this absorber must be retreated. So what we're going to do is now that we have stabilized our nafta, let's stabilize our oils or light gas oils. So you add light gas oil, you ensure that most of the gases will remove and will continue upwards. And now we have rich oil, which can be recycled to the main column. Now we have our off gases, hydrogen gas, methane, ethane, and maybe even ethylene. And our rich oil, which is recycled. 
Now let's continue with the NAFTA part. We have this NAFTA. Remember that it was recycled, cooled down, separated, and goes down. Now this NAFTA, you can see, it has lower vapors. And in this stripper, what we're going to do is try to force the uh, separation of NAFTA. So any off gas and some NAFTA will be recycled and most of the NAFTA goes here. The problem with NAFTA is that we still have some off gases, especially butane and propane. So in the debutanizer, we're going to be removing C3 and C4. Debutanized stable NAFTA, typically named gasoline, is now ready to be added to the blending pool. So this is our FCC gasoline, the so-called FCC gasoline. And now butanes go here with propanes. And now the depropanizer separates propane versus butane. This can be go sent to the liquefied petroleum gases or C4 can be sent for the isomerization and convert further uh, isobutane, which later can be used in the alkylation unit and so on. Now let's talk about the reactor shape or let's say the structure. The basic principle of the reactor is to enable fluidization of the catalyst particles. So that's why we call it fluidized uh, reactor. It has a fluidized section in which they are moving, but still what you want to have here are the catalyst particles. And you want to ensure that these are well enough dispersed in order to maximize the area and volume of reaction. Also, you want to ensure pressure and temperature of the reactor. Of course, you're going to have a temperature profile, also a pressure profile as well. Also, what you want to do is to regenerate the most of the catalyst by burning off coke. This is seen mostly here in the regenerator. So what we're going to do is send the spent catalyst. Therefore, we have two main units, the reactor and the catalyst re regenerator. Let's talk about the units inside the reactor. You have a riser and a cyclone unit. So the riser is this one, and the cyclone units are these ones right here. What is the riser and what is its job? Well, its main job is to be a long tube, which is going to allow the fit between or the contact between the materials. So here is very hot material, and what's happening is that heat is transfer, but there is no interaction between the materials. The hot catalyst is enabled to rise through the lift media in the riser. So we have this part right here, lift media. And the riser contact time is about 0 0.25 seconds. That will be 250 milliseconds. The riser is eventually connected to the cyclone units in which we have most of the interaction. So in the cyclone units, they receive the catalyst and finished product. So you can see here there's interaction between both areas. The catalyst that enters the cyclone unit is fully coked, so it, mis it must be recovered. In here, the separation of the hydrocarbon vapors, hydrocarbon vapors and catalyst as a solid are going to be separated. The catalyst falls down to the vessel that houses the riser, so this is essentially spent catalyst. So they go here. This is fresh. So technically, as you can see here, guys, try to imagine you were a fresh catalyst. You go all the way up, you react, and you fall down. Once you fall down, you just go as a spent catalyst. And now let's focus our attention to the catalyst regenerator. The spent catalyst is going to enter via this, let's say, valve. And it's going to enter this cold uh, vessel. Here, we're going to supply it with air. So the air enters because it was previously compressed and of course treated at temperature and pressure conditions, uh, is sent to this sparger. Remember that sparger favors bubble formation, especially if you're talking about liquid and gas. You have a liquid right here, which we do have. We will have a lot of bubbles. So what's happening here is we have high temperature, we have air and we have combust uh, combustible material. Combustion is going to take place. So this way we're going to remove coke. The catalyst plus air after this operation will enter this cyclone operation. So it's pretty similar to that 
of the reactor but in this case we don't have connection between the riser and the cyclones air enters a dense phase of the catalyst so as you can see here air will go here and it will also enable the movement of the catalyst to a dilute phase catalyst air so here right here we have our catalyst and air we must separate flue gas and catalyst this is typically achieved as a solid fluid operation catalyst is solid flue gas is gas the activity regain catalyst is sent so we have uh, recovered our catalyst and we can now send it back so it will be sent back catalyst will be very high in temperature remember that here we had combustion coke was uh, let's say removed from the catalyst and now we can get back to the riser and repeat the cycle so this is what I wanted to show you about the process on the FCC.